Inside General Electric's large steam turbine generator plant in Schenectady, New York, a giant crane capable of lifting 400 tons transports a completed generator stator from the manufacturing bay to the shipping area for loading on a specially designed railroad car. The stator and other major components for a 600,000 kilowatt large steam turbine generator are being shipped to Cousins Island, Maine for installation at Central Maine Power Company's W.F. Wyman Power Station. The 525,000 pound stator is placed on a special depressed center rail car built to General Electric design and specifications at a cost of over a half million dollars. The stator is then blocked to the car which is capable of carrying weights of a million pounds and measures half the length of a football field. Since the railroads have been unable to build the specialized heavy-duty equipment General Electric needs, the company has had cars specially constructed at its own expense. In the past 10 years, GE has invested one and a half million dollars in design and development of six heavy-duty depressed center rail cars. Riding on 20 axles, the 200-ton car is designed so that the stator load can be shifted hydraulically from side to side to clear track projections. Delivering a mammoth large steam turbine generator whose internal parts weigh several million pounds to an electric utility customer is a tremendous undertaking and a delicate art. Selecting rail and water routes and providing and scheduling the right transportation equipment requires many months of advanced planning by knowledgeable shipping people with years of experience. This film shows how the problem of shipping large power generation equipment has been overcome by the ingenuity of General Electric transportation people. Their efforts have not only resulted in the safe and on-time delivery of hundreds of large steam turbine generators, but also savings of fuel costs and thousands of dollars in transportation costs for customers. The special train of six cars is made up into a single shipment. In addition to the generator stator, other equipment includes a 60-ton generator rotor, two low-pressure rotors for the steam turbine, and both the lower and upper high-pressure shells of the turbine. Total weight of the equipment is 1,050,000 pounds. From Schenectady, the six cars are moved to Hudson, New York, for water shipment to Cousins Island, Maine. The single rail barge shipment is one of the largest ever made in the United States to an electric utility. It not only results in savings of money, but also a considerable saving of time. General Electric transportation people confer constantly with railroad officials and thus have knowledge of routes and railroad capabilities. They are even familiar with the various limitations of tunnels and overpasses which may obstruct shipments. As a result, they are able to plan the rail routes of heavy equipment to be shipped anywhere in the United States. The yellow caboose tagging along is part of General Electric's private railroad equipment. It accommodates GE rail transportation people who accompany shipments of large turbine generator parts throughout the nation. At Hudson, highly skilled men from one of the nation's major machinery moving companies make the transfer of the 525,000 pound stator to a low bed trailer. The 104 wheel trailer is 73 feet long and 11 feet wide. Each axle is separately suspended to keep the load level at all times. The stator is hoisted by heavy duty cranes onto metal rollers. It is then carefully inched across the rails onto the trailer. Other turbine parts are placed on individual dollies for the short trip from rail car to seagoing barge. This roll-on, roll-off method of shipping heavy pieces of equipment eliminates the need for additional cranes until final installation within the powerhouse in Maine. A road from the railhead has been specially prepared and the trailer moves to the barge without delay or mishap. 
The stator is the heaviest single stationary component of a steam turbine driven generator. Shipping power equipment of this size has become commonplace for General Electric. Recently, a large generator stator was shipped to New York for transportation to Tokyo. It was the heaviest single piece of equipment to clear through the port of New York. General Electric also shipped it by rail and barge to the freighter taking it to Tokyo. Once on the barge, the trailer is blocked up and welded to the deck along with the equipment on five dollies. All during this operation, the barge has remained stationary because it is resting securely on the bottom of the barge slip. Once loaded, the water is pumped out of the hull and the barge refloated. On the seagoing tug Progress, modern navigational and communications equipment is employed to ensure smooth sailing down the Hudson River to New York City and out Long Island Sound to the Atlantic. The route is then through the Cape Cod Canal and up the coast to Maine for a total trip of 500 miles from Schenectady to Cousins Island, Maine. The journey was abruptly interrupted at the approach to the Cape Cod Canal as Mother Nature staged the Northeast's worst spring storm in 30 years. The tug and barge were moored at the western end of the canal to wait out the gale. Weather conditions were constantly monitored with binoculars and TV cameras, and a close watch was kept on the barge with its multi-million dollar load of power generating equipment. After a delay of almost three days, the shipment was on its way once again, moving through the canal. Open water in sight, the captain began lengthening the scope on the barge in preparation for the last leg of the journey, 180 miles on the open seas. Destination, Cousins Island, Maine. The barge traveled approximately eight miles over tranquil seas off the coast of Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. 15 hours later, the barge entered Casco Bay and came into sight of Cousins Island. The shipment was maneuvered without a bump next to the fuel dock below the Wyman power plant and tied fast to wait for the approach for the next full high tide. Then the barge would be nudged over to a special unloading slip just yards from the plant, but too shallow for landing at low tide. The slip was built especially on the island for heavy shipments to avoid the problems associated with meeting the state's limitations on highway transportation. Proximity this far north to the Bay of Fundy with its notorious high tides means that the Casco Bay area also labors with a great differential in tides, a total of 12 feet between high and low, the high providing the necessary window to put the barge into the slip for unloading. The next morning, with all necessary arrangements on land ready, the barge is transferred to the slip. The turbine and generator components now but yards from their installation site. As soon as the barge landed, its holes were open and motors began pumping water into the barge to sink it once again to the bottom of the slip. This would eliminate any movement of the barge during tidal changes. At the same time, trucks began dumping gravel in front of the bow and around the sides in order to make the roll off the barge as smooth as possible. After rolling the components onto the barge at Hudson, the prime mover had been trucked to Cousins Island for the roll off of the shipment. Steel supports were unwelded and cut away from each component skid one at a time, and then the piece of equipment rolled off the barge by dolly into the power station.
the 525,000 pound stator was the last piece of equipment to be unloaded. Ever so slowly, approximately one mile per hour, it was rolled from the barge along the road up to the crane, which would hoist it to the top of the power station. The stator then had to be transferred from the trailer to the crane and be placed under the crane hook. When installed, this would be the second largest steam turbine generator in the state of Maine, the fourth General Electric steam power maker planned for Central Maine's Wyman Station, all four units manufactured by Schenectady General Electric. Steel coil cable slings about two inches in diameter were slipped around the four trunnions, two on each side of the stator, to facilitate the lift. Each trunnion bolted to the stator with 48 two and a half inch diameter bolts. The stator was hoisted inches at a time. Supporting platforms were built under the stator as it moved up the outside of the building, a procedure which took approximately 10 days. The huge stator component, very near journey's end, would now be slowly rolled into place in the powerhouse. Steel platforms supporting heavy-duty rollers were carefully and precisely constructed to ease the stator down the last few yards to its mounting, to its mounting base. General Electric's first delivery under the crane hook, months in the planning, was now hours from completion in a move described as a major logistical feat. Careful planning meant the shipment had been consolidated into a single barge. Inland highway travel had been completely eliminated, greatly reducing transportation costs. Thus, the move had been executed economically with minimal impact on the environment to a relatively inaccessible area. When it becomes operational, Maine's second largest steam turbine generator will be capable of producing some 600,000 kilowatts of electricity to help supply industrial, commercial, and individual electrical needs to central Maine customers. Months and miles later, months of production and planning for the move, some 500 miles over land and sea, General Electric Stator and its steam turbine components will now be readied for service. The successful completion of the rail barge shipment reflected the knowledge, expertise, and ingenuity of every person involved in its execution. Power on the Move, a dynamic and continually changing story of General Electric's systematic approach to the individual needs of its electric utility customers.